Last year, we created our first Manufacturing Innovation Institute in Youngstown, Ohio. A once shuttered warehouse is now a state-of-the-art lab where new workers are mastering the 3D printing that has the potential to revolutionize the way we make almost everything. There's no President Obama believes the future of manufacturing is 3D printing. As the president said, you can make just about anything with a 3D printer, from toys to machinery, even human body parts. We want to learn more from Cornell University professor Hud Lipson. He is the co-author of Fabricated, the New World of 3D Printing, and he joins us now. Not only are you joining us, but you're joining us with a 3D printer, right. which has spent the last almost four hours creating a mug, which is to replicate our CBS this morning, Saturday mugs. That's so right. first of all, welcome. Second of all, tell us about how this is happening. Well, this is a, a one of several kinds of machines that basically can fabricate things uh, on your desktop, any, almost anything, just by depositing material and building it up layer by layer. How, I mean, what's the range of this? What can, what can this make? So uh, this particular machine can make things out of plastic and the, what it can make is really uh, you know, the limit is your imagination. Really? Is, but uh, if you go beyond these machines, you can print in metal and other kinds of materials. It's really, uh, the, the range is, is infinite. Now, can that machine make some of what's here on the table? Uh, some of these uh, parts, uh, absolutely. There's some uh, plastic parts here and so forth. But some of these uh, parts here are a little bit more sophisticated. For example, uh, there's some metal parts over here. And there's some uh, moving robotic parts that have made uh, with multiple materials clay parts and even cloth uh, for clothing and this is a titanium uh, nose implant so a there's titanium really titanium nose implant? nose implant wow so when it comes to applications i uh, the medical industry clearly is, is one of the places where you could see this happening and, and changing the way our world looks absolutely i think you know it, already you can you have uh, 3d printers used to make uh, implants like this uh, titanium implants and hip implants but uh, what is unfolding now is what we call bioprinting, the ability to print with live cells. And, and there you, you're not just printing permanent implants, but really out of uh, living cells, uh, real original parts, if you like. That's mind-boggling. I mean, in simplest terms, how does this work? So if you're familiar with the inkjet printer that uh, spits mm. out droplets of ink on a piece of paper, a 3D printer spits out droplets of plastic and builds the object from the ground up. Now, it doesn't have to be plastic. It could be other types of materials, but uh, it's basically all the 3D printers uh, build through an additive process that basically eliminates all the, the challenges with complex shapes and so forth, and you can make almost anything. The, the printer you brought here today is uh, technically very sophisticated. It's more of a professional printer, but from what I hear about the future, individuals will be able to purchase these printers, and for a couple hundred dollars, there are some questions about, you know, what types of things could the individual at home build that may not be good for the world? Well, actually, this is a consumer 3D printer. This is a uh, uh, printer that costs about $2,200, mm -hmm. and uh, it actually is one that many people uh, have at home. In fact, more of these are sold than uh, industrial scale printers. So, but what today. worries, I mean, what are the, I mean, there are some potential implications of this that, that could be troubling. I mean, you looked at this in the book. What did you find? Uh, well, you know, there's, uh, there are a lot of interesting uh, questions that have to do, for example, with consumer safety. Mm -hmm. uh, if people, if you print a steering wheel, uh, and it breaks, uh, you know, who's liable to, for that? How do you know that it's a certified design and so forth? Uh, if you print a gun. You can print a, a part of a gun or even a working gun. Uh, it won't be a military grade uh, gun, but it will work and, uh, uh, you know, be a disposable plastic gun, but uh, it would be very difficult to regulate something like that. Hmm. Professor Hod Lipson, thank you for joining us. I have a feeling this conversation is one that will continue to become bigger and bigger over time. I think time. it's just beginning. Yes.